let me introduce our guest speaker today. This gentleman joined us the first time was April the 6th. And by God, afterward, my phone lit up like a Christmas tree. He was so amazing. Well, let me give you a little idea, his background. He comes from, from the, he, he comes from, uh, an, he's an athlete. He's known from, from Miami, Florida. He was a boxer. He traveled the United States. He was very successful. Maybe I'll tell you some background, why he stopped boxing, what happened to him. But more important, he came on to our ACM family 10 years ago. He's been a regional vice president for two and a half years. Him and his wife, they just had their first baby uh, four months ago. Without further ado, all the way, I think he's in Canada today because he goes between Canada and the United States all the time. One and only, regional vice president platinum, Mr. Angel Carmona. Good morning, sir. Great morning, sir. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for having me this morning. Uh, I'm actually in Cleveland today on the East Coast. And uh, I appreciate you having me on the call. Uh, so many people don't have that leader uh, in their upline that holds them accountable, keeps being consistent, and just pouring that high level energy like it's their first day. So definitely grateful for you. And once again, thank you for having me on the call to train all of the leaders on here, up and coming leaders. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to uh, go over the syllabus today. First, I'm going to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. Then I'm going to go over my training today, uh, today's topic. And then at the end, we're going to do some Q&As and uh, then we'll end the call and go attack the field, implement, right? So first and foremost, if you don't know me, my name is Angel Carmona. I'm just a regular guy with extraordinary dreams. As Mr. Thomas said, I've been involved with this company now for 10 years. Prior to getting started, I actually used to be a pro boxer, but due to the fact that I grew up in a rough neighborhood in Miami, Florida, I was caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that led to me getting shot and that ended my boxing career. So in a world that I knew nothing but boxing, I prayed to God for an answer, another vehicle to drive me to my dreams. Because my dream was never to become a pro boxer, but to get rich and travel the world, start my own charity and provide for my family. So when one vehicle broke down, I was actually introduced to this business by the same person who introduced me to boxing when I was 10 years old. So I saw the information, it made complete sense. I put my excuses aside and plugged into the training system. And today we're blessed to say that we're regional vice presidents with thousands of customers all over the world. Now, how that's possible, uh, for many reasons, it all started with the we're having the proper mindset. And on top of that is uh, it's a, it's a list, right? So that's what, the, what today's topic is, how to have a never ending list. See, when I first got started, and I'm sure some of the more seasoned people, and this, this training may be for the more seasoned people or the brand new person that feel like they already ran out of people, right? Uh, when I first got started, there was an example on the presentation that went, uh, this is you, and then there is 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, 16, 32, 64, 120 people on your seventh level. So it was seven levels of duplication, starting off with two. And I myself didn't believe, I was like, well, I could probably get to the second or third level. I don't know that many people to get to all the way to the seventh level, but I didn't understand the power of having a never ending list and the power of exponential growth, okay? And the fact that it wasn't just you, it was everyone that they knew. It was you and, and your, your team and whoever they knew as well. So I always wondered how these people, all the senior vice presidents, circle of champions like Mr. Al Thomas would uh, always have people at convention with them and they would consistently be in phase one, open line production as senior vice president, regional vice president, regional director, right? So I always wondered, and today, 10 years in the game, I'm here to share my 10 years of experience on how to have that never ending list. So if you're ready, I implore you to take notes. Now, who doesn't want to have a, a, a list that continuously expounds and you always, whenever you decide to get in the trenches, you can just reach out and pull some leads, right? Everybody wants that. Now, how this is possible is by a few different strategies that I'm gonna share with you today. 
Now, Eric Worre, author of GoPro, if you haven't read GoPro, I highly suggest it, right? Uh, it's one of the top selling books for all the network marketers, definitely changed my business. Eric Worre stated a quote that says, amateurs ran out of people to talk to, professionals, they have a never ending list. They always have people to talk to. And the reason being is because we create ways to always add people to our funnel. We have what you call a funnel that we're always having adding people and we just constantly follow up with those people. See, one of the mistakes a lot of people make is when someone tells them no, you automatically delete them out of your phone and keep it moving to the next. Yeah, that may have happened with some people, especially if they're rotten. However, there are some people that it's important that you always touch bases with. If somebody tells me no, when I show them the presentation, you know what I do? I simply say, it's all good. Hey, uh, let's connect on Instagram. Let's connect on social media. Add me on Facebook or, or LinkedIn. And guess what? They're gonna witness my success. I've, I've done that with people 10 years ago and then they saw me hit regional vice president two and a half years ago. And guess what? Though year after year, people saw my growth they saw my transformation because people don't just, they don't just want to hear a testimony. They want to see one. So they saw my transformation, how I started to dress different, how I went from being single to married to not having a family, how I started to being basically not leaving my county where I lived in Miami-Dade County to traveling all over the States to different countries. I flew to Columbia for the launch, right? Every time they launched a service in Canada, I, I flew over there. So uh, how I was able to do that, people witnessed this because I simply connected with them and added them on social media. So when you're out there and you implement these strategies, I want you to write down the five categories of people that you're actually looking for, because if you don't know what you're looking for, you're never going to find it, right? So the first type of people, when you, when you implement the strategies I'm about to go over, first person you're looking for is a customer, right? You never know who's going to need one of our services. Everyone needs ID seal. Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody uses gas and electricity. So you're looking for customers, potential customers. You're looking for potential partners, people that want to do the business. So you're looking for potential partners. Next, you're looking for collaborators, people you could do collaboration with. What do I mean by that? Well, think about this. Everybody and their mama on this call doesn't matter the generation, you all know the song by Whitney Houston, uh, I Will Always Love You, right? Everybody knows that song. But guess what? What most people don't know is that that song is a collaboration. That hit single was written by none other than Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton wrote that song. So that's a collaboration. You can't have one without the other. She wrote it, and Whitney Houston performed it, and then it became a hit single. And, you know, that song affects people and touches people from all walks of life in all different generations all over the, the world. So when I mean by collaboration, there are some people that they may be in another company. Maybe you can barter with them. There are some people that the timing may be off, but maybe they have a large following and you can hop on their live one day because maybe they have a podcast or maybe they have a YouTube channel and you can go on there and use their platform, right? Donald Trump always talks about other people's money, right? And Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, they're always talking about other people's money. Well, it's time in the virtual age to use other people's stages, use other people's platforms that they have, whether it's a podcast or YouTube, a live video on Instagram or, or, or TikTok or, or, or Facebook and just be able to reach other people's audience by doing collaborational type of work. Then you maybe you have a traditional business. Maybe you, you need employees, right? Maybe you want to replace yourself. So this is the fourth type of person that you're looking for. Maybe you, you, you need an employee for your personal traditional business. And last but not least, you're looking for haters. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no such thing as but bad publicity. See, if you don't have haters, are you really doing anything in this world? If people aren't talking about you, if people aren't saying, oh, there goes that phone guy, that energy guy, that cybersecurity guy, right? Are you really doing anything? So these people, that's free promotion, free marketing for yourself. So 
that's the five type of people that you're looking for when when you're implementing the strategies I'm about to go over. So back to ingenuity. I remember I was in Miami one day in Fort Lauderdale to be exact. We had an event and a senior vice president flew in and this guy owned multiple businesses. And he one of them was a traditional business where he had a warehouse and he needed some boxes moved. And uh, at the end of the ACN training, he did the Saturday training. It was a regional phenomenal training. He said, by the way, I need somebody to come help me move some boxes inside of my warehouse. I'll pay you 10 bucks an hour. And I was like, man, I want to pick this guy's brain. Let me go and help him out. He's poured into me. I'll help him out with his traditional business. But I, I ended up going to his warehouse and I asked him, I was like, man, so tell me about your business, blah, blah, blah. How'd you grow a team so big? This guy had, this senior vice president had uh, over 250,000 people on his team. And he was like, Angel, it's all about ingenuity. He said, you have to get creative. He said, let me give you an example. When I knew I had to fly from, I think at the time he was like in Chicago or something, I had to fly from Chicago to Florida. I wasn't going to pay for my ticket. So I called the local re, uh, senior vice president in that market. I said, hey, would it be of any value that if I go and do a training for you? He was like, absolutely. He was like, okay, buy my flight. He had the other senior vice president buy his flight. Then he said, I needed people to help me move the boxes. So guess what? At the end of my presentation, I said, hey, by the way, if you need, do you want to make some extra cash? I need help. I need some strong guys to help me for 10 bucks an hour. And guess what? Work for four or five hours. I ended up recruiting 10 to 20 guys to come help me. He said, that's what you call ingenuity. You need to do this in every aspect of your business. Get creative. Find multiple ways where you can meet people so that you could ultimately recruit, recruit them. So guess what? A couple of weeks ago, I wrote a book, but in the back of my mind, right? The book is called Boxer to Businessman, how to use the, how to implement the disciplines from that I learned in boxing and to be, to become successful in business. And at the end of the day, in the back of my mind, no matter how many copies I sell, somebody's going to be impacted by that book. It could be one person, it could be 10 or hundred or a thousand people, who knows? When those people message me, I wrote that book because in the back of my mind, it's going to expand my network. My network, some way, somehow, I'm going to end up recruiting people because they read that book. So whatever I do in the back of my mind, ultimately, I'm going to recruit somebody. If I meet somebody, if I tell them happy birthday, if I am at a restaurant and I tip big, whatever the case may be, in the back of my mind, somewhere down the line, it's not in the forefront. Like, I don't, I'm not oozing. It's what you call a... Uh, commission breath. I don't have that commission breath where I'm just like, oh, sign up, you know, two get two get two and we sell services and this and this and that, you know, it's only one nine twenty five a month. I don't do that. I don't verbally uh, throw up on people. But in the back of my mind, I plant seeds. That's all I am. I'm just a farmer. I'm planting seeds. And then eventually I know one day that tree, that seed will sprout. So that is one idea of ingenuity. What I did right? So I, I travel, I go to networking events. My advice to you, download the app called Meetup. There's an app called Meetup. And this app, uh, when you download it, it's a free app. They give you a questionnaire to see exactly what you like. And are you interested in art? Are you interested in dogs? Are you interested in books? And basically what the app does, you put a 25 mile radius, whatever radius you feel comfortable with driving, and it will let you know when there are meetings, events, networking events with people that have the same interests as you. So if you like puppies, there's people around your area and the app will notify, hey, next in two weeks from now, there's going to be an event where a bunch of people like puppies. Go meet up with them and just make friends. That's all you want to do. So there's sometimes wine tasting. These events, sometimes they're free. Sometimes they cost 10 bucks, 20 bucks, but you have to invest in yourself. But this is a, this is a golden nugget. It's a, it's a free app. Once again, it's called Meetup. Download it. You create your profile and it'll always notify you. It'll send you email. This is happening on this day and it'll let you know ahead of time. And it's just a way to, be, uh, to apply that ingenuity. So do your best to not go out of your basically your focus or passion. So for example, 
if you're not into real estate for whatever reason, don't go to a real estate meetup, okay? The name of the app is called Meetup, Meet Up. So don't go into real estate if you're not into real estate. Don't go into a wine tasting event if you're not into that. The key is to go somewhere where you're an expert. So for example, if there was a meetup about boxing, I would go to that meetup. And because I used to be a professional boxer, I will automatically be an expert, hence giving me influence over the masses. So people that are there, that are just fans. Oh my God, you used to be a boxer. What about this? What do you think about this fight? What do you think about this fighter, right? So if, Mr., if there was a, a meetup about real estate, Mr. Al Thomas will show up. He will automatically be the edified expert. And guess what? Now you have influence. People are going to follow you and they're going to know, they're going to want to know what else are you into, okay? So now that was one of the key things. Now, obviously online, back to social media is very key, uh, a key factor nowadays. When you give somebody your card, the first thing that they do is go check you out on social media to see if you're the real deal, to see if you're actually that person that you say you are, or to see how credible you are. Studies show that before 75% before of people make a purchase, they go to Instagram to verify that business and the social proof. Before 75% of people make a purchase, they go verify the business on Instagram and, and or the product and to see how people like it in the reviews, right? So people are doing the same thing with you. Before they buy into you, before they buy into your pitch, your vision, your company, your business, people will go and check you out on your social media. So make sure that your profile is uh, appropriate. You're wearing the, the, the right attire on your profile picture. You want to attract the right opportunity, not the wrong opportunity. Don't have your shirt off, right? It, 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 like you're a bodybuilder or something. Um, make sure that you're posting positive things. Nothing to divide, nothing to create type of argument. There's a, uh, there's a, a saying that I learned a long time ago from one of the senior vice presidents. See, I check people too. Everybody does. Everybody checks everyone out online, right? One of the things that I learned from a senior vice president is, write this down, those who offend the least will make the most. Those who offend the least will make the most. What I mean by that is don't talk politics on social media if you one day potentially plan on recruiting everyone on your, on your social media. Don't talk religion on your social media if you one day uh, plan on recruiting everybody because those things tend to divide. So my mentor taught me, well, uh, when, when pertaining to networking and recruiting, cold, especially cold, cold market, because your warm market is just your warm up. That's just warm enough for you to get you going. So eventually everyone you know that's going to join your team, you're not going to know them. 99% of people on my team, I, don't, I didn't know them prior to getting started. So one thing he taught me, he said, Angel, treat, uh, treat peaking and networking like dating. He said, if you walk up to a girl and you ask her, is she interested in going on a date? And she says, I don't know, maybe email me. How serious are you going to take that girl? Right? I said, not that serious. It's the exact same thing in business. If somebody tells you, or if you say, hey, are you open to making more money outside of what you're, current, you're currently doing if it didn't interfere with your schedule? And they say, Maybe send me some information through email. You can, but don't wait on that person because they're not that serious. Somebody who's serious will be like, yeah, take my number down right now. Here, call me right now. Yeah, I got the right number. They're going to call on the spot. That's how you can tell by people's urgency. You can tell their hunger by the level of urgency that they take. So uh, treat this business like dating uh, and do not post anything on social media that will create some type of division, any type of argument, okay? Your, your goal is to simply add value to people, whether it's through quotes, through videos, recommend books to people. Even, even if you're not getting anything out of it right now, even if they're not your customer right now, don't take it personal, still pour into people. You want to make sure that you add so much value to people that they just want to be around you. There are people in my life that I add so much value to them 
that when I fly anywhere, they want to take me out to eat. I don't have to pay for food. They want to put me in a hotel because I'm adding value to their life all the time. There are people that if I call them to be a customer, they ask no questions. Whatever it is, I'll pay for it. If I tell somebody, hey, I need one more business partner, pay this amount of money, they'll sign up, no questions asked, because I've always added value to them, whether it's through social media, through texting them, through calling them, always recommending videos. Let's say I know somebody that sells bottles of water, and I found out about this hazard that, oh, I saw a video that you know can help them market their bottles of water better, I'll send them that video, and now I'm adding value to that person. And guess what? One day that person is going to join my team because they saw that I added value to them. So throughout this entire process, it's very important that you, do, you don't do anything to jeopardize your livelihood. What do I mean by that? Well, back when I used to box, I took my boxing very serious. My coach told me, Angel, don't do anything that can injure your hands. So I wanted to play basketball one day. He told me, is that going to make you millions? Are you trying to be a professional basketball player or a professional boxer? I said, a boxer. He said, okay, so why would you play basketball where potentially you can harm yourself and not be able to box anymore? It works the exact same way in this business. If you're trying to build a team of people that follow you and invest their hard-earned money into your business, why would you do anything to jeopardize that? So as an example, if you want to build a team of people that are disciplined, accountable, that are about their business, they're, they're, they set goals, they're ambitious, whatever the case may be, you don't want to be posting, let's say, a video of you online at the strip club or whatever. Or if you're trying to right, recruit people that are religious, you don't want to post you know, pictures and videos of you drinking on the weekend because that's going to jeopardize your livelihood in this business. Make sure that everything that you do is in alignment with where you're trying to go. So don't do anything to jeopardize. I, I could give you many, many more examples, but you get the drift. It's a very simple concept when it comes to jeopardizing your business. Don't do anything. If you want to recruit people, some people get turned off if you curse, you know, if you curse a lot or if you curse at all. So I never curse on my posts. You'll never see me make a post about cursing. You'll never see me make a post about religion or make a post about uh, uh, politics because I know those things alienate some people. And our business is for everybody. We want people, uh, there you go. If you don't want your mother to see it, don't post it. <laughs> so there, this business is for everybody, people from all walks of life, all religion. When I first came to AC, and that's one thing I fell in love with, how there were people from all walks of life, from all religions, all, all different shapes and sizes. And, and, you know, they didn't do anything, any background checks. All they cared about if you had a backbone. So that really, really inspired me. So with that being said, one thing that I'm going to challenge uh, every single one of you to do is and this may rub some people the wrong way, but I mean this from the top of my heart. If you're serious about building this business, especially through online and social media, delete anyone that's already in ACN from Facebook and Instagram. See, you cannot recruit those people again unless they are on your team or they are a top leader like a top platinum RVP or senior vice president like Mr. Al Thomas or your direct upline, you do not need friends that are in other teams on your page, like your posts. Because when you say, hey, who wants to make extra money? My company is expanding. There's up to $1,000 on the table for the month of June. And then a bunch of people from ACN are gonna like it. There's this thing called an algorithm on social media. And the people that interact with you interact with the most, those are the people that see your post. So, for example, I had a friend many years ago. She had a cat and she would go on Facebook, but nobody, she would never like anything. She would never post anything. And when her cat died, she posted, my cat died and I'm so sad. And nobody liked it. Nobody responded. 
Why? Because her algorithm didn't know to who to show it to. So the algorithm didn't show it to anybody. And she got upset and deleted her Facebook account because she thought that people weren't sensitive to her situation. When all along, it was the fact that she was not interacting with anyone. So I say that to say that if you constantly interact with people that are in ACN already, will you constantly interact with people that are on other teams, they like your posts, you like their posts, they, those are the people that are gonna see your status. When you say, hey, we have a promotion with Vivian, who wants a free iPad? Only ACN people will see that. You want people that are not in your business on your social media, seeing your positive quotes, seeing your transformation. Like I said, aside from your downline, your direct upline or big leaders in the company, my challenge to you is that you delete those people. And trust me, you'll thank me later. And so will your bank account. So with that being said, let's see, let's make some time for some questions. Now, before we go into these questions, let me talk about this because the quality of the questions you ask will determine the quality of your business and your life. It's more important to ask the right questions than it is to have the right answers. So be mindful when asking these questions that these questions are business building questions, not, not circumstantial questions that can change at all times. Like, at any moment, the compensation plan can change. At any moment, a service can change. You know, we can get new partners or drop one partner, right? We're in, you know, the founders are in control. So make sure that these questions have to do with building your business. So with that being said, uh, don't ask any product-based question. There we go. You can either unmute yourself or type it in the chat box. So let me go to the chat. I see there's a lot of things here. Let me see if anybody asked any questions. All right, great morning, great morning. All right, I mentioned that. What's the name of the app? I already answered that. I check on people if you don't want. Bum, bum. Backbone and posture, there you go. Everyone is able to unmute yourself. So if you have a question, go ahead, unmute yourself and I'll be here to answer. Business building questions only, please. Mary, do you have a question? Me? Yes. You're on me. I was just, you were speaking about um, social media and how you share there. And I just, I didn't quite get all of it. So if you don't mind just going over that once more. Okay, so the key about social media is not to become a spammer. Do not become a spammer posting, oh, we have this, uh, we have this promotion with Flash Wireless. We have this promotion, Strive, get five, get free with ID Seal. You remember, people do business with people, not with companies. A Harvard study showed that success in business is 87% uh, people knowledge and 13% product knowledge. So with that being said, when you're on social media, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, of uh, some of you may know him, he wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And the whole analogy behind the title of that book is that you give, give, give before you ask somebody to be your customer. Give, give, give before you ask somebody to hop on a webinar. Give, give, give before you ask somebody to get a referral from them. So the whole point of social media is put positive quote, um, share positive videos, information, share your story, your transformation, share, get creative, right? Once again, ingenuity, see if somebody's doing something that you like, maybe they're in another company even, and then just right? Rob and duplicate, R&R, &R, Rob, R&D, Rob and duplicate. So just create that. And then every now and then drop, hey, my company's expanding, looking for two motive, self-motivated people to work alongside with, send me a direct message. Okay. Something like that as an example. So the key is to be active, be consistent, because once again, the Facebook algorithm, someone, that's another question, uh, transitioning to that, someone just asked in the chat, Elaborate on the Facebook algorithm. So let's say you have a thousand friends on Facebook and you make a post, uh, I love my mom. 
And that post will only be shown to about 10% of your Facebook friend list. So out of a thousand people, only 100 people will see it, depending on who you interact with. The more people you interact with, interact meaning you like, you comment and you share their posts and you're always messaging them. Those people will see the I love you mom or I love my mom post. Now, if you out of those, out of those 100 people, let's say that see it, let's say 50 of them like it. Now they're going to look at it as a high ratio. That's 50% of people that engage with your post. Now they're going to boost up and show it from 10% to 15% of your following. So now you're looking at out of a thousand, 15% is 150. So 150 people got exposed. And the more people that see it, obviously it's a numbers game. The more people that see it, your post, the more that engage, the higher the algorithm and the more they'll continue to push it out. Hence, that's how people go viral. Somebody sees something and they share it a lot. They like it a lot. And then more and more, it's just, it's, it's exponential growth. Facebook is nothing but a network marketing company that only one person gets paid for, Mark Zuckerberg and his employees, but nobody else does. But we get paid to add friends and tell people, hey, hop on Facebook. And now look, 2 billion people are on Facebook. So Mary, I hope that answered your question. And uh, who else asked that other question about algorithm? Kenny, is it consistency? How much time a day? Yeah, so it is very consistent. I like to post five to six times a week and at least two to three times a day minimum if you're on Facebook. And there are certain days, like yesterday was a holiday. You could have made a simple post with a flag of the United States, happy Memorial Day. Thank you for your service to all the military active and, and inactive veterans or whatnot, people that are on duty. Something like that, that was a post. Then Tuesday, the first day of the week, ready to start, uh, ready to crush it, right? Then there's Friday. Oh, thank God it's Friday, but I'm working through the business. I'm working through the weekend because I know the weekend is where entrepreneurs get ahead and the masses get left behind. Something like that, right? So you always want to be consistent, right? Sunday, most people go to church. You could say something like, God bless, you know, everybody make sure you have, you relax and you know, reset with your family and reflect for the, I just made a post on my Instagram this past weekend about Sundays, how powerful Sundays are because uh, you, you get time to relax. But what most people don't do is reflect. You're supposed to take the last six days of the week, look back, see what you could have done better, see all your mistakes and invest the past into the future week. So that's something that I did on Sunday. So do you recommend operating on all social media sites Example, Facebook, IG. Yep. Now Gary V has a Gary V has a a rule. He says, don't go onto one platform until you master, don't go to on the next platform until you have mastered one. But uh, you know, sometimes it's timing. Like TikTok right now is brand new. And if you get on there, you could easily go straight to the top. So basically, uh, I personally I, I, I'm doing all of them at the same time because you never know where the lead can go from. It is very time consuming, but if you're, you want to focus on one, Facebook is king. You know, Facebook is king. LinkedIn has over a hundred thousand people on there that make over, or they have over a million people that make six figures on there on LinkedIn. So, you know, you can master, if you have the time, do all social medias, but if you don't focus on one or two, okay. Uh, you feel free to unmute yourself because if not, I'm going to continue to read the questions on here. You have a lot of knowledge regarding social media. Do you have any tips on where we can learn more? <clears throat> There's so many social media trainings out there. Uh, man, I, I just, this is what I do. If I see somebody that I like that they're successful, whether it's through only social media or through network marketing, I follow them and I, I study their videos and I study, you know, whatever you want to be great at, find somebody who's great at it and just study them. And like I said, I've been, I've been doing this for 10 years. The guy, uh, when I first got started, he was a master at social media. So that's how I got it. The point is 
get it out. You don't have to get it right, but at least get it out. It's better to get it out than it is to get it right. You just want to constantly make posts. And eventually you're going to see what works, what doesn't work. If you make a post about your mom and you get a lot of traction or your family and you post a picture and you get a lot of traction, then focus on that. That may be your niche. But if you make a post about the type of food that you eat and you don't get a lot of traction, maybe you're a pescatarian or a vegetarian, then don't post about food. So you, you learn from trial and error, okay? So, okay. Building an Empire by Brother Carruthers is a good book on network marketing, absolutely. So what's your go-to books to gain knowledge of network marketing? Man, GoPro, Building Your Network, uh, Building an Empire by Brian Carruthers is also great. There's, man, I've read so many books. This book is called uh, How to Become Filthy Stinking Rich in Network Marketing by Mark Yarnell. He also wrote Your First Year in Network Marketing. So those books, uh, but once again, at the end of the day, those, those people are going to tell you the same thing. Post online, be relevant, be consistent, never quit. It's a numbers game. So what I would do, I would always focus on gaining leadership knowledge, how to lead people. That's more important than knowing tricks and algorithms and all of that. Because even if you pick up the phone and just call the, the people that are on your list on your phone book, you're gonna get results. So all of this, like everything I just did is in addition to making the phone calls, in addition to your system. The Meetup app is in addition. So I, I went to Meetup for like a year or two straight, once a month, I will go to a Meetup through the app and I will recruit somebody once a month, but that was just in addition to my meetings, my Zooms, right? When we had home meetings, everything was in addition to what I was currently doing. Social media posts, I recruit one person every month. That was in addition to what I'm currently doing, whether I'm tap rooting, working with people, right? And working through people. So everything I just mentioned is in addition to what else. So go ahead, free, feel free to unmute yourself. You're welcome. You can unmute yourself if you have any questions. So, all right, you can type in the box in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Any more business building questions that I can help assist anyone? I hope that helped everyone. Uh, So yeah, I mean, that was my portion. I hope that helped a lot. Uh, Mr. Thomas, do you want me to touch up on anything else? Sir, I thank you. I wish everybody would get off their rear ends, quit trying to research everything and do what Art Williams say, just do it. Like you said, I wanna leave everybody with, with this. The biggest gap in the world is that between knowing and doing. As Mr. Thomas just said, do not be addicted to education, but allergic to execution. There's, there's, there's a story that says, you know, you give the wrong person a bucket of water and a sponge, and they're going to Google how to start a car wash. They're going to download five apps on starting a car wash. They're going to tell, call all their friends and ask them, what should they name their car wash? Then they're going to try to design a logo. But if you give the right person a bucket of water and a sponge, the next morning they're going to be outside washing cars. So which one are you? Do not have analysis paralysis where you're just trying to learn, 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 but never implement. Go out there and make it happen. Thank you so much, sir.